here we are in the monument of the Savile Club on 69 Brook Street it's called the monument because it holds books written by members of the club as well as other books as well uh, so it stands in the mon well the monument stands as a collection of the written outputs of the members essentially hello here i am again in the savile in the monument of the club uh, and conveniently I've moved this time though I'm still as I've just said in the monument but I'm in front of as you can see just behind me the nomination slip in relation to Kipling so Rudyard Kipling you can see he had a lot of friends or a lot of people that thought he may or should become a member and that's good for us in this case that I'm about to talk to you about because the term of art in terms of objects in this three certainties case is friend. So what we get here is a judicial definition by Mr Justice Brown Wilkinson, as he then was, of what is a friend. Uh, and the case of course is Re Barlow's Will Trusts, 1979, one weekly law reports at page 278. So re Barlow. So in essence, as I say, the judicial test of what is a friend. Of course, here we must have in mind that it's obviously 1979, so the conceptualization by Brown Wilkinson of what a friend was in the given categories that I'll tell you about, of course, may be updated in the modern sense when we think about Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and other websites where loose acquaintances might fall under the auspices of what uh, Brown Wilkinson determined to be a, a friend if we were updating the case in the, in the modern sense of social media. So that's important to consider uh, in these definitions I'll give you of what Brown Wilkinson thought was a friend when of course you consider the facts of the case and in particular the idea that there was a valid trust we see in the case Brown Wilkinson distinguishing Gulbenkian where of course in that case we needed to uh, see who all of the objects were. Here there's a uh, d distinguishing operation by Brown Wilkinson where he holds in Barlow that we'll, we'll see uh, in relation to the subject matter which were pictures that were held by Alice, uh, sorry, Helen Alice Dorothy Barlow were in fact a series of of gifts uh, and it was in that way that he was able to distinguish the the judgment in Gulbenkian and the tests that are uh, enunciated there which were then used in fail rebound number two etc so what were the facts well Helen Barlow as I've mentioned she died in 1975 um, but she'd left a large collection of pictures which as I say is the subject matter uh, and she directed that the remainder uh, uh, of those pictures, after some had been distributed to specific named people, should be held by her executor on trust for sale, provided that the executor allowed any member of the testatrix family and friends who wished to do so to purchase any of those pictures at a valuation made in 1970. You might think, well, why are you forcing your friends to purchase pictures and not just giving them? Well, that, it was because the value that was raised through this process would go to the uh, residual estate and then be capable of distribution amongst uh, uh, the relevant people. So, do we think friends is too vague to be given legal effect? In other words, how can we define a friend? And Brown Wilkinson happily does this for us. He says that the word has a great range of meanings. Indeed, the exact meaning probably varies slightly from person to person. Some would include only those whom they had been on intimate terms over a long period. Others would include acquaintances whom they liked. 
Some would include people with whom their relationship was primarily one of business. Others would not. Indeed, many people, if asked to draw up a complete list of their friends, would probably have some difficulty in deciding whether certain of the people they knew were really friends as opposed to acquaintances. So we start to move towards, with those definitions anyway, the idea that perhaps there might be uncertainty in terms of that object, a friend as an object. Um, however, Brown Wilkins, as I say, distinguishes Gulbenkian uh, in the sense of having to be definitive about what constitutes a given class of objects. And he says that I hold that the disposition does not fail for uncertainty, but that anyone who can prove that by a reasonable test he or she must have been a friend of the testatrix is entitled to exercise the option. And that's the option to purchase the pictures. So, by summary, or in summary I should say, what we might say here is that the, uh, the minimum requirements of friend to be able to prove to take that option, according to Brown Wilkinson anyway, were threefold. They were first, that the relationship must have been a long-standing one. Secondly, that the relationship must have been a social relationship as opposed to a business or professional relationship. And then finally, um, although there may have been long periods when circumstances prevented the testatrix and the applicant from meeting, when circumstances did permit, they must have met frequently. So, have those terms of art in mind, friend, and of course we touch on family a bit in, in this case as well, but it's friends really, think about how Gulbenkian is distinguished in the case by Brown Wilkinson, uh, and think about how the, the definition of friend might be updated from 1979 up to now, 2016. So from the Savile Monument, I bid you goodbye and happy reading of Ree Barlow. Goodbye.